The deep sea and ocean waters can be mysterious and unforgiving to any poor soul that finds themselves washed ashore, or those tragic souls that stumble upon something they perhaps shouldn't have seen. I'm your host Mr Ramsey, and tonight I present to you a selection of deep sea and ocean scary stories. If you enjoy, be sure to subscribe, and a quick thank you to my Patreon supporters and channel members, Indrid Cold, Jess DiCataldo and Chrissy. Anyway, without further ado, let's begin. The sea raged as the waves crashed into each other like lightning and the skies thundered in anger. It was a night for shipwrecks and mysterious creatures to roam the waters. That's when she surfaced, leaving the depths of the ocean, her hair as violent as the water. She knew she would find him here and all she had to do was sing. His eyes opened to blue skies, with orange and purple starting to fill the cracks, spreading like a disease. It was odd for him to be up at this time. He rolled onto his back, kicked around under the covers and shut his eyes, determined to go back to sleep. He could hear the ocean, the waves caressing the shore over and over again, declaring their everlasting love. The constant swooshing of the sea, like music, slowly lulled him back to sleep. There was a whistle in the wind as if someone was singing to him, a soft, sweet melody, almost like a whisper. His eyes snapped open again and he exhaled in frustration. He threw his sheets aside, there was no way he was going to fall back asleep. It was a cool seaside morning, too early to be bright. The light had barely touched the ocean. People were still dreaming, still lost in their own head. It felt odd to be up at this time. And there it was again, that music in the air. An alluring brush of sound in the wind. Without really knowing how, he found himself down at the beach, walking along the water. The sand felt cool and dry under his feet. Minutes passed, hours maybe, he wasn't sure. Somewhere along the way, the morning fog had rolled in with the rumbling of thunder in the distance promising a storm. Without a sense of direction, he followed the melody that had enchanted his heart. That's when he saw her standing by the shore, a woman wearing a dress the colour of the seaweed, staring longingly at the ocean. The bottom of her dress was wet, where the waves kept creeping up to kiss her feet as if she were royalty. The wind kicked up a storm in her hair, blowing her red curls every which way. The singing grew louder, as if it was right in his ear. He could swear it was coming from her. He was mesmerised, caught up in her beauty and in the wistful music that seemed to surround her. The way her eyes glared into the infinite, the way her skin shimmered, tinted blue. He wanted to run his fingers through her soft hair that burned like hellfire. He longed for her to sing to him her beautiful song of lust and agony, her melody so haunting and seducing, calling him, asking him to come with her, swearing to him her body, her soul, her voice, with words from another world, promising him the softness of her breast, but also the beneath them, even if it was cold and full of bad intentions. But something felt wrong. Deep inside, he was trying to fight her, resist her. You want me? She whispered, her voice echoing in his head. Come with me. And she reached out to him with hands that were ready to drag him to the bottom of the ocean. He wanted it all, to love her, hold her. He wanted to wrap his hands around her pretty little neck and squeeze until her charm was broken, feel the magic be crushed under his fingertips. No, he choked, barely been able to get the word out. Her head snapped around to look at him, her eyes storming with rage. The sea raging with her, the skies greyered as her face turned into a sinister smile, her eyes locking him in a gaze and when she sang it was almost painful. He wanted her to stop but her voice cast a spell, like giant hands wrapping themselves around him, pulling him closer. His resistance left with the wind. He wanted to belong to her story, a story of magic and mystery as deep and dark as the sea. He wanted to be free. But her voice captured him, and her filthy lies entranced him. She belonged to the water, and now he belonged to her. 
When she reached out to her hand, he took it. He knew her song ended in death, but what a small price to pay for an eternity with her. The day was August 5th, 1989. The rain pounded onto the beach like gunfire, and the lightning arced across the sky in magnificent blue colours. I sat in my tent on a cliff edge, listening to the boom of thunder while holding in my hands a pair of binoculars. It had been like this for the past six days, and I had been camped out here all the while. I was not the kind of person that would go chasing tornadoes or anything as dangerous, so please refrain from assuming such things. No, I prefer to camp near coastal regions with lots of thunder, lightning and rain and simply observe Mother Nature's destructive force. This night, however, would be the last night I ever go storm watching, or anything near the sea for that matter and not for any of the controversial reasons such as loss of interest or inability to do so. What occurred that night on the beach below the cliff edge is something I will never forget. It's something that will haunt my thoughts and torment my nights of sleep until the day I die. I had decided to stay up later than usual and observe some more of the wondrous power that nature was. I took the binoculars away from my face for a moment and rubbed my eyes, for they often got quite dry when I spent extended amounts of time staring into them. As soon as I had finished, a bright flash lit up the night sky, and in that brief but bright flash, I saw something on the beach, something that caught my eye, making me forget about the lightning and the thunder for just a second. In that brief flash, I saw people moving around on the beach. At first, I thought it was my own playing tricks on me, for this is not uncommon especially considering my location, the time of day and the fact that I was all alone. But as soon as that thought crossed my mind, another flash lit up the sky and I saw more people moving around on the beach in the pelting rain. Why in God's name would anyone be moving around out here, at this hour, and with this kind of weather? I naturally thought to myself, curious, as I am sure anyone would be given the situation. I brought the binoculars back to my eyes and focused in on the beach where I saw movement determined to prove my eyesight right or wrong. My binoculars remained fixed there on the beach, eagerly waiting for another flash of light, still not fully convinced at what I had seen. I was just about to give up and shift my gaze from the beach when the flash finally came, lighting up the beach in its entirety. The flash was for only a couple of seconds, but I managed to see people again, and in more detail this time, thanks to the binoculars. There must have been around five of them, and they all seemed to be cloaked in black robes or something extremely similar at least. They all seemed to have hoods thrown over their heads, from the robes I presume. Two of the cloaked figures appeared to be walking towards the ocean itself, each of them carrying a post of some kind that looked to be around the same height as they were. The other three figures seemed to be walking towards an area of the beach that I could not see from my vantage point. The light from the flash left as soon as it had come leaving me staring at total darkness. How odd, I said to myself, completely intrigued by what I had just seen. At this point, I had completely forgot about watching the lightning and listening to the rain. All of my attention and thoughts were being direct as I tried my very best to determine why these people were here and what they were doing. But in truth, I would never have been able to imagine the events that would occur that night. My binoculars were still focused on the beach, waiting for the next flash to come when I saw dim, orange shapes bouncing around the beach. I observed the orange lights for a short while before the flash came again. The first thing that I noticed was all the figures were carrying the orange lights. I quickly made the connection between the bouncing orange lights and what the cloaked figures were carrying, realising that they must be torches. But before seeing something quite uh, ominous, Two of the figures were dragging a sixth uncloaked person through the wet sand towards the coast. I quickly determined that it must have been a woman judging by the clothing she was wearing, and then I noticed something thrown over her head. It almost resembled a burlap sack of some kind. That was all I managed to see before the light left once again, leaving only the dim orange light of the torches moving around the beach. This was when the thought of calling for help struck me. What if the person was in danger? What if he or she needed my help? I thought to myself, but quickly realised that no one would dare to come here in this kind of weather at night. No one would arrive until morning at the earliest. 
So that idea was out the window. Almost immediately after that brief thought, another flash of lightning lit up the beach, allowing me to see clearly once again. The woman sat on her knees between two posts that appeared to have been stabbed into the sand of the beach, very near the ocean itself. It was hard to see from where I was, but it seemed as though the waves were actually getting larger. Two of the figures seemed to be tying each of our wrists to a separate post while the other three stood quite a long distance away, merrily watching the other two and holding their torches. The scene disappeared as the black of night once again returned to shroud the beach in darkness, with only the dim torches visible from my tent. What in God's name is going on, I thought to myself yet again, even more confused and scared than I was before the previous flash. I thought about making my way down the small cliff in which my tent sat upon and helping the woman. I wanted to help her, I truly did. Yet. I knew that it would be basically impossible for me to navigate my way to the beach in this weather. And even if I did, how could I ever hope to overpower all five of those figures by myself? Maybe I was seeing this all wrong. Maybe this wasn't as foreboding as it seemed. Maybe this was something entirely different than what it seemed to be. I thought to myself as I sat in my cold, dark tent. But I knew somewhere in the back of my mind that this was not the case. Regardless of whether the situation was as it seemed or not, I was alone, and there was nothing I could do but observe and hope that this would end okay. My binoculars remained focused on the beach, ready for the next flash. I hoped against hope that what it revealed would be far less sinister than what had been revealed before, but I somehow knew, even before the flash, that it would not be. Suddenly the flash came, light flooded the beach and what I saw was very similar to what I'd seen before. The woman's arms hung above her head and she sat on her knees with her head down. I quickly noticed that her wrists were tied to the top of the posts, judging by the position she was sitting in and the way her arms were outstretched. All five of the cloaked figures stood some distance away from the woman, holding their torches. They all just seemed to be motionless. They were just staring at her. The light vanished, and I was staring into darkness once again. Then I began to feel something strange, a rumbling of sorts through my body. It did not come from my body, no, it, it seemed to be coming directly from the earth itself. I took my binoculars away from my face as I tried to determine the source, completely forgetting about the beach for a moment. The rumbling became a shaking as it became stronger. At first I assumed that it was an earthquake. But then the flash came again, and what I saw made me realise that this was no earthquake. The flash came suddenly and seemed brighter than other flashes. As soon as the light flooded the beach, I saw it, even without my binoculars. Its size made it nearly impossible not to see when the flash came. Initially, I was confused by what I was looking at, but it barely took me a second to realise what it was. A large, humanoid figure stood upright in the ocean water. The flash only came for a few seconds, so I could only make out so many details on the figure. But what I did manage to see in that short time was that its arms ended in a mass of tentacles and, and that it appeared to be reaching down towards the shore where the woman was. Its body was glimmering as if it were soaking wet, and its skin, its skin seemed to be bleeding a black liquid from various pores in its body. As the light left the shore, a loud roar sounded from the beach. The roar seemed to shake the earth itself, and I could feel it as it vibrated through my own organs. Struck, I sat staring at the shore, unable to comprehend or process what I had just seen. I wanted to tell myself that it was just a figment of my imagination, all of it, that I had just imagined this whole thing, or maybe that I was having some crazy nightmare, yet I knew that this was not the case. I knew that what I had just seen had happened for real and this was not something I could wish away or make excuses for. This was real. As I fell deeper and deeper into my thoughts of what I'd just seen, another flash came. The beach was completely empty except for one thing, a broken post partially sticking in the sand. Sleep never found me that night. There was too much fear and horror to even hope for the slightest second of sleep. I wanted to just pack up and leave that night and forget this entire ordeal had ever occurred, but I couldn't. 
It was too dangerous, not to mention how fearful I was to even step outside of my tent. Because as frail as that tent was compared to that beast, I still felt some sort of security inside of it, like a false sense of safety. The morning came slowly and it wasn't until daylight flooded the entire area that I felt safe enough to step outside of my tent. I left the coast as soon as I could and I've never been back within 200 feet of an ocean since. I kept telling myself it was a nightmare, that none of it was real, but I knew in the back of my mind all the while that what happened to me was real. I've carried the horror of what I've seen with me ever since that horrible night. I've never told a soul, not even my wife, but I can feel my memory slipping in my old age, and as much as I would like to merely forget what happened to me, I know that there must be some record of what happened that night, which is why I convey this story to you. Whoever you are, whether you believe that I have said to be true or not, please just don't forget what I have told you. Be wary of the ocean, be wary of the thing that came from the sea. I stared up and into the heavens, stars dotted the evening sky like little white splotches of paint haphazardly splattered across a black canvas by some wannabe artist, believing himself to be the second coming of Jackson Pollock. It reminds me of the type of piece one might find in a terrible, surrealist art gallery. One where pretentious hipsters sip two buck chuck out of plastic cups, all the while hoping their idiotic interpretations of each exhibit will make others think they're more intelligent than they actually are. On a nearly moonless night, the tiny twinkling specks of light were the only things illuminating the darkness brought on by a dusk. I had grown to look forward to nightfall. The days had become unbearable due to the constant bombardment of UV rays that I had been forced to endure. The evening's cool air tended to my damaged skin and gave me a reprieve from the daily beatings I took from the sun. The night also provided constellations, which had become a welcome distraction. The stars told stories, stories that helped me forget. Forget about the decrepit old lifeboat in the middle of the ocean that I was stranded in. I barely noticed the commercial fishing boat as it approached my dinghy, a testament to how far gone my mind had become from the weeks of isolation out at sea. Even to this day, I don't know how they managed to spot my tiny boat shrouded in the vast darkness of the open ocean. Hey there, are you okay? The young man was looking down at me from the bow of the ship. His piercing blue eyes almost glowed in contrast to the black sky behind him. Upon further inspection, I could see the whiskers that had begun to sprout from his face, a result of going days without shaving while out on the water. As he scratched his stubbly chin, more of the crew crowded around the front of the boat to take a gander at me. I suppose a half-dead man marooned at sea was the strangest thing they'd seen in quite a while. An honour I would hold for only the briefest of moments. He's alive, one of the fishermen shouted. Let's get him up here now. As I watched the crew frantically buzz around the ship's deck like a bunch of worker bees, trying to figure out how to bring me aboard, a laugh escaped my mouth. Not a loud bellowing one, mind you, just a tiny giggle. It was the irony of the situation that I found comical. Perhaps the last little chuckle was the humour centre of my brain finally fading from the weeks of emotional agony I'd sustained, going out not with a bang, but with a whimper, just a tiny giggle. It started with a loud crash across the starboard side of their boat. The fishermen struggled to retain their footing when the powerful impact caused their vessel to rock onto its side, nearly capsizing it. Shouts streamed from the mouths of startled sailors as I watched them desperately try to make sense of what had just occurred. Another thunderous clang rang along the side of their ship and this time it tipped. The once silenced ocean air was now filled with the sounds of chaos as the trawler smashed across the surface of the sea, flipping completely upside down and sending the men toppling overboard into the cold, murky water. I struggled to lift my head in order to peer over the side of my dinghy and the anarchy taking place around me. The fishermen barely had a chance to breach and catch their breaths before it began pulling them back down in the abyss. Their panic quickly intensified as one by one they started to realise their crewmates were disappearing into the deep, dark sea. You've never truly experienced pandemonium until you've heard a dozen grown men screaming for their lives in the middle of the ocean. The young man who had first greeted me from the ship's boat thrashed and kicked through the water, urgently trying to make his way towards my lifeboat. 
With Salve, she merely inches away. He flailed his arms wildly, reaching and grasping with reckless abandon, attempting to grab onto the side. I watched the hope in those piercing blue eyes of his turn to hopelessness, as a black sludge-covered tentacle wrapped itself around his ankle and yanked him back down under with one quick jerk. It was the fishing boat's turn now, still submerged. The sea beast easily crumpled the already twisted hunk of metal before sinking it down to the watery graveyard at the bottom of the briny deep. There it would join the countless other vessels that had shared a similar fate. Without warning, the massive creature erupted from the surface of the sea. I wondered briefly if the salty taste of the water that splashed my face when the beast made its appearance stemmed the ocean itself or the blood of two men who had died in it. I shut my eyes, hoping not to catch a glimpse of the horrible features. The sound of water trickling around the body as it waded towards my lifeboat caused me to wince in fear. Though my eyes were clenched tight, I could still feel its awful presence as it closed in on me. I gagged and choked as the rancid smell of its hot breath forced its way into my nostrils and down my throat. With a thud, it dropped a mangled human limb across my lap, one of the fisherman's arms to be precise. It spoke only one word, the same word it had said to me many times before, the same word it would repeat to me many times after. Eat. And with that, it slithered back into the sea, leaving me to myself again. I opened my eyes and stared down at the mutilated piece of flesh lying across my sunburnt thighs. For a moment I was tempted to throw it back overboard, but thought better of it fearing retaliation from the creature for not listening to its commands. For whatever reason, it seemed to want me alive. I wasn't about to test its patience. I sunk my teeth into the skin and tore a chunk of muscle from the bone. It had been a week since I had last eaten. The hunger pains in my stomach helped to subdue the horrors in my mind and made the atrocity of cannibalism slightly easier. I let out a sigh and looked back up the starry night. I was alone again and once more only, silence reigned over the ocean's cool air. Thank you all for listening, and remember to leave a like and subscribe with notifications on so you don't miss any future uploads, and I'll catch you all in the next one. Thank you.